The Build Show Build Boston series is sponsored by Alora Fiber Cement Siding, Mitsubishi Electric Train US, Roseburg, Shuko USA, and Warmboard. Hey, Build Show, Steve Basic Architect. Yeah, another episode of Build Show Build Boston. Nice, brisk fall day here in New England. Sun to my face, construction project to my back. Doesn't get any better than that. Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about flooring. We got some hardwood, we got some tile, we got some really good systems going in. Our warm board tubing's going in and our radiant floor heating. We got finish guys, we got siders. Place is shaping up. We got our pool roughed in. We got a lot of things going on today. Let's get after it. All right, so I figured before we headed inside, got into the flooring and stuff, there's a few things happening outside here that certainly worth talking about. Um, you know, progress on our construction project. Obviously we have a new pool in the backyard here. Um, couple metrics on the pool. It's 40 feet long, 20 feet wide. It's about six foot deep at the deepest point here. Um, it's a gunite pool. It just recently got shot. So if you're not familiar with it, it has a uh, steel webbing cage and then they shoot the concrete or the gunite against it and basically sticks like a pasty cementitious layer there and then you have some guys coming through there and shaping it. A um, couple things of uh, note. Notice this trough down here at the end of the pool here. Those of you that are familiar with pool design and, and such, this trough is basically going to house the roll of the cover. Right, so you can see the beveled edge on the front here. We'll have some nice coping stones. The grade will get brought up. This will all get finished nice and neat. But in this trough is basically the pool cover. And you can see down along both sides of the pool, there's a little recess for the rail. So the pool cover, you know, you'll be able to go inside, hit the switch, and the pool cover will close or open. Um, depending on what you need it to do, but it'll basically ride along those rails on the end of the pool, but it'll get stocked up and coiled up here in that trough. Um, you know, pools are one of those things, you know, maybe about a third of the houses we put them in. Um, so anyways, let's jump around front too before we go in. We have some uh, interesting stuff happening out there that is dealing with the stormwater management system um, around the house and some jurisdictional issues that we can uh, bring to your attention and, and talk about and be the show you the reason on why we're doing that. So let's jump around front and uh, and then we'll head inside. Hey, Julie. Hey, how's it going, Steve? Always a pleasure having Julie on site because Julie has the answers. We might have the questions, but Julie has the answers. So. If you don't remember, but Julie did an awesome job when we were laying out the floor framing and doing the floor sheathing out there. And we talked a little bit about the system. So I think before we get into the install, maybe we just kind of cover all of these sure. issues again. Now, one of the things I love about warm board is the client commits to doing warm board. Warm board says, hey, Steve, send me your CAD plan. And then you guys take over. From yeah, that. I mean, we take over every aspect of the project. So we're doing the panel uh, layout for the framer. We're doing the tubing layout. Um, we do all of the mechanical design, an electrical layout. We calculate everything from the flow rates to the boiler size. And so that really makes this a simple uh, system to install. Um, we've taken the complexity out of Radiant completely. Yeah, and one of the things that I think is really cool about this project, I've used warm board on previous projects. You guys have seen the videos, but this is the first one where we're using space pack for our heating system. Right. So we have an air to water. There's been a big push uh, nationwide, also by state and local jurisdictions for electrification. Um, heat pump falls under that category. So here in Massachusetts, there's actually a pretty big rebate incentive for going with heat pumps right now. Um, that's what Scott is using on this project. 
And um, the heat pump is nice because um, no fossil fuels. Um, we are the next closest thing to geothermal as far as COPs go. So we can get at this project, we can get- And COP is? A coefficient of performance. Okay. So where a, a geothermal ground source heat pump gets you about a COP of five, that means it's 500% efficient. Um, air to water heat pump with space pack will get you up in this neck of the woods about a COP of three on a mild winter day, which means you're running at 300% efficient. Now, if the homeowner here were to have chosen an electric boiler, an electric boiler is only ever 100% efficient. It doesn't care what the temperature is doing outside. It's always going to be using the same amount of energy. So with a heat pump by space pack and by, with the warm board comfort system, um, you're not only saving a lot of money compared to geothermal, but you're, but you're still getting those high um, efficiencies. So it's a great trade-off to save some money on your job site. Great. Now, I know you guys, in working with you in the past, you guys have a whole series of rules that, you know, we, we have about 3,200 square feet of uh, floor space here. We just don't go run 3,200 square feet of tubing. Right. Right, so you guys have rules. I can see our plan here. We have, uh, it looks like 12 different zones for this floor. Right. And I, I don't even know how many loops that is. Um, yeah, so, so we figure out all your loop lengths. We're gonna make sure that with your flow rate and your loop length, that that's balanced within the zone for uh, equal heat distribution. So our engineers, you know, we, we install probably the most radiant systems of any company uh, in the country. We're doing this day in and day out, thousands of projects a year. Um, so our designers are well-versed in making sure these systems operate flawlessly, which is also what the comfort system does. By, by coming out with our own controls, we were able to make everything run um, smoothly and do some really neat features that just haven't ever been done before with radiant. Right, and each one of these zones obviously um, is fully coordinated with the orientation of say, you know, over here we have a south facing window wall, then that floor is gonna get heated naturally a lot more than say this north facing wall. So your engineers are taking that into account. I know one of your rules is you don't like to have any of your runs longer than 300 feet. Right. And they're all single pipe loops, meaning that there's closed no loops. connection. Yeah, they're closed, closed loops, loops, the only connections at the manifold our engineers are even suggesting suggesting where they think the thermostat should go. So um, yeah, that'll make sure that these homeowners, you know, we don't want the homeowner, we don't want a, a homeowner to be comfortable 90% uh, of the time, uh, certainly not less than that. We design uh, radiant systems that make sure the homeowner is comfortable 100% of the time. And that's all within our proprietary control system. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys have seen the, the video that we did with Matt, probably about two years ago, we did, it was a renovation where we put warm board in and I'm here to report two winters. The homeowners, it is their favorite feature yeah. in the house. Yeah, for sure. They, you know, it's, it's one of those things that it, every homeowner that I've done it with said absolutely no regrets yeah. putting the warm and, and you know, I'm a, I've been a happy homeowner now for 10 years, so I live with it myself. Um, there's truly nothing like it. It's, it's, a, it's an incredible feeling to have radiant heated floors for sure. All right, so I know you've been here earlier this week. You went over with the contractors about where um, we have to router in some loops and, and such because there are some site modifications that right have to be done pretty much on every job. We can't get every one of these loop lines to align, but you guys do a really good job. Why don't we go back? I know these guys did some of that, but we could talk about the kit that you provide and all the pieces that are in there and what we're gonna do. Great. All right. We put together a little makeshift uh, exhibit table here. There is, I, I wanna say there's a lot to this system, but you guys simplify it. So you guys make it real easy, but I don't wanna you know, make light of the fact that you guys worked very, very hard to set up the installation package and ensure that the subs get everything that they need. Right. So they don't have to go shopping for a router bit right. or how do I template this? Yeah, we provide everything except the router. So um, we provide the bit, the guides to make sure you stay in the template and don't chew up the sides. Um, we're providing you with um, preferable routers um, to use. We wanna make sure that you get the right faceplate that can accept our guides. 
Uh, so we lay out everything and you know, the whole idea is that we try to make it as easy as possible for the install team. Right, and so these three here that we're looking at, these are basically just templates, right? We have a straight run. Correct. Kind so, of a... So our panels, Warmboard S comes in four different panel types. That's gonna make up 95% of your grooves, maybe more than that. There's, every job is gonna have a little bit of custom routing that needs to be done to get in and out of um, closets, around uh, any AC vents in the floor, um, flooring outlets, toilet flanges, whatever the case may be. Um, so these, route, these routing templates can get you around any obstacle. The one that is used most often is this half moon, and that's what we used in this room here. We can see it there. Now, earlier when we were talking, you made a really good point that when your engineers lay out the panel, you know, they could lay out the panel so they all come with the, the um, lines already cut and channeled in there, but then that would generate a lot of waste. Right, so our, um, our designers are going to make sure that when we lay out the panels, um, we are laying them out efficiently um, so that we're not generating a lot of waste. So that means in a room like this, where we could have aluminum turns on all the walls, um, that would be expensive. In a room like this, by doing spending maybe 20 or 30 minutes doing custom routing, you're gonna save a lot off the bottom line for panel cost and add those routes in after the fact. Gotcha. So, like I said, we have numerous templates here, but let's concentrate on this one because we actually have samples. This is the half round, so we have a much larger loop and a smaller loop on the inside. You guys provide the router bit, which I find absolutely outstanding because there'd be guys, oh, what kind of router? What size should it be? And you guys take all of the guesswork out. You have it fully documented. I mean, you have a manual that just deals with tubing. Right. right, yeah. So um, this is gonna outline all the specifications. So the um, installing HVAC or plumber will know what they're dealing with before um, they arrive on site. We also have a lot of videos online that uh, detail installation. We use a PEX aluminum PEX. So that might be a little different than um, what your plumber is used to using. The reason why we like the PEX aluminum PEX is because it is easier to work with on site. Gotcha, and when you say PEX aluminum, we, we grab the roll here. This is actually an aluminum tube that has this protective covering. Right, so the aluminum um, allows it to be moldable. If you were to take a piece, piece of plain PEX and bend it, it would go back to the shape that it was originally. Yeah. This is moldable, so that's why it's easier to so work with outside. So you can get outside. it in that round. Correct. Gotcha, and this is, it appears about half inch. Is half that inch tubing, correct. Half inch tubing. So with the half inch tubing, we are able to distribute more water, which means that you know, the floor, the more water um, you distribute to the floor, the more heat you're going to get. Gotcha. Now, I would say this is so easy. An architect could install it, but I'm not going to take the chance of embarrassing myself. But I'm you know, let the you, you know, I'm, I'm an architect too, right? <laughs> I'm, let the I'm an architect too, but there I can do go. it also. There you All go. right, here we go. But you can show us um, just how easy. I'll get you the rubber, there. rubber mallet here. So you literally could just step on it and it would go in. You can get an idea from just that. And there you have it. I mean, it's it really is that simple. Now, you know, one of the comments that in, in past videos that I always get, it's like, well, what happens if I put a nail in that? Well, the idea here is don't put a nail or screw in But that. it does happen. But it does happen. It does happen. So. Um, one of the benefits to warm board is that our tubing is on the top of the panel with the aluminum also on the top of the panel between um, bottom of hardwood and top of subfloor we do not need an extra layer so while your hardwood installers are nailing off the hardwood they're going to be able to see all of the tubing see where it is yep yeah. so it's only any retrofit if somebody came in for some reason sure and and tried to drive that but you could probably i'm thinking get a thermal camera and be able to outline Yeah, exactly so I have a where... thermal camera um, app for my phone. It's a little, um, it plugs in just like a square de device would. Yeah. And uh, I think it was 250 or $300 and it works beautifully to see where all your tubing is. And that's a nice thing to have anyways um, for later down the road, if you know, 20 years, if these homeowners ever decide to renovate, they'll be able to see where the tube is from underneath, but from the top side, they'll be able to use an infrared camera. Right. And, and one of the things, I, we, we might have jumped the gun a little bit, but I wanted to make mention of, you guys have your own proprietary sheathing. This is a new construction sheathing. This is an inch and an eighth plywood. Correct, yeah. And 
It is not put on top of the sheathing, it's used in lieu of typical house sheathing. So you guys, by using your system, we get the benefit of an exchange for that cost of floor sheathing. Correct, yeah. And and as far as the sturdiness, you know, at the weakest point of the panel, which is where the groove is, we are equal to a three quarter inch. Our APA rating was taken without the aluminum, so that's gonna add some rigidity as well. But 95% of the panel, you know, doesn't have grooves. So you're gonna get the real sturdiness of an inch and an eighth. And I was on two job sites last week, one in Vermont and one in Maine, and the framers just couldn't believe how different it fell, um, felt on their footfall to um, be walking on an inch and an eighth subfloor. Yeah, no, this is, it's, I mean, my 160 pound frame, it doesn't, doesn't even move the house, but um, yeah, this was, this was really helpful. I know we have the system in downstairs. I say we will have you back here in the future when we got all of the tubes run and we can talk a little bit more in detail. What a great talk with Julie, huh? Julie is one of my favorite reps in the industry. She's just a wealth of knowledge. Um, she comes out and she's got energy. You know, she's always going 100 miles an hour. Let's go, go, go. She loves to talk about it. So hopefully you enjoyed, you know, Getting Julie here, we talked about the system, getting the uh, tubing installed, but now we're on to the next step. So you remember we met Jesus, who was our insulator. Well, we got Elvis, who is our flooring installer. So we're gonna come over here. Elvis, how you doing, buddy? Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> so Hardwood Flooring Company. Correct. Right, what's the name of your company? It's uh, Elvis Hardwood Floors. Elvis Hardwood Floors. You do all kinds. We're doing an engineered wood floor here, but you do the standard wood yeah, all floor, kinds, sanding. All kinds, yes. How long have you been in business? I've been for 20 years. About 20 years. Yes, so uh, you've seen a few floors go down. You've seen a few floors, not yours, fail, but you fixed other people's work, oh, no. right? <laughs> a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, exciting day today. I mean, I always love, you know, finish putting in the finished floor is one of my favorite part because we go from kind of construction to the nice stuff, right? And for those of you that aren't aware, I'm just gonna rip this off. So we're using Moffy, moffy.com. Give them a little plug here. Moffy is a hardwood flooring company. I believe they're based in Europe, right? So I European believe so, yeah. yeah. So this is, they're, they're out of Austria, I believe. Um, and this is European white oak. Um, this is a uh, th full three quarters. And you can see here, it does have some character grade to it. So we do have knots and such. It's not a, a clear. And you can see here, this is laminated. So we have the white oak layer on the top. We have the white oak layer on the bottom. And then we have a uh, European spruce infill there, tongue and groove. Full three quarters. Now, Elvis, we were talking outside. This this appears to be, you know, at least an eighth of an inch. So yeah, kind of like, probably like a quarter inch. Yeah. So we can get we can get a couple sandings oh, out of this, right? Yes. So you were talking outside that potentially at least two sandings. At least two sandings yes. out of this. Yeah. And this, believe it or not, even though it might look like it's not finished, this is actually finished. Correct. Right. This has a plant oil finish that gives it this beautiful matte finish, which the homeowner Scott and Jonathan, they were after. They, you know, fell in love with these floors somewhere and we searched it out. And uh, here we have it. And it is, I think, going to be a gorgeous looking floor. Now, Elvis, let's talk a little bit about the logistics of hardwood floor. This stuff got delivered, got dropped off. Mm -hmm. Now, we brought it into the house here. You guys carried all these in here. And uh, how long does this need to stay? I know people always talk about, hey, we need to get this to acclimate to the to the house. So what are we talking? Well, like, normally what I recommend is to how, in the winter time, how the heat on, you know, and like uh, let it sit for at least a week inside yep. of the house and then we can start to do the install. Right. Because I know some people, they just carry inside the same day and do the install, but that's the wrong thing to do it, you know? So, like I say, I always like to keep it inside of the house for a week. 
Gotcha. So acclimated with the heat on, you know. And when we're talking about acclimate, I know a lot of people like to think of it as, oh, well, we need to get it to the same temperature. No, we're really trying to strive for it to equalize the moisture content, right? So that Correct. the boards don't grow or shrink exactly. after they get installed Correct. by either losing moisture or gaining moisture. So when we're talking about acclimating, we're really trying to equalize the moisture content of the wood um, to the room. Now, <clears throat> in the floor here, we have our floor joists are going from my left to my right. Is there a certain pattern that we should be concerned about? Do we have the option to put it either way? What do you like to do? Or what's your recommendation when well, we talk about that? Normally, if the joists is run like uh, front to back, I always recommend to go the opposite way, you know. But in this case, we have the radiating heat so the best way i mean what i'm thinking it's probably go perpendicular to the correct tunnel. yeah because we gotta make sure you know uh like what i was spoken with uh mr scott you know so you gotta take the time because we don't want to hit any of those yeah you know so that's what i recommended to go to the opposite way you know of the radiating heat you know so um i mean we have to glue it and staple you know okay uh because like i said it's a wider plank yep so and this is this is what this is that's like, like seven seven, seven or nine inches yeah, yeah. from the wrong, so but, uh, that is pretty wide now you bring up a really good point i know in the past i've, I've done radiant floors the warm board system and you know, the comments on the video are, well, what happens if you drive a nail or a staple through the tubing? Exactly. Well, professionals like yourself, we don't drive nails or staples through the tubing, <laughs> no, right? You take no. your time, you do it right. Oh, no, that's what I and say. we don't yes. have a problem, right? Yeah. So, um, now, this is an inch and an eighth floor, the warm board subfloor. So, I'm sure that is, say, opposed to a three-quarter inch subfloor. Just the sturdiness of this probably allows for this to go either way, too. Oh, no, right? Having that thicker subfloor. Correct. And, and certainly a, a stiffer floor there. Um, <clears throat> and you had mentioned that we will be gluing this down, and we're going to talk to Jim, who... Um, he's the rep from uh, one of the companies that Moffy suggests um, in a minute, but uh, we're going to glue this down and staple it. Correct. That's what I recommend. That's know, what you recommend. Don't have any issue in the future, you know, so, uh, I mean, to do it the right way, you know, so. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So we brought it in. We'll give this maybe about, you know, five days or so. We'll see you back here in a week and uh, we'll talk a little bit about it getting installed when you're actually throwing it down on the floor. Sounds good. So I look forward to it. All we'll right. We'll see you back then. <laughs> all right. So I made a quick switch. I got rid of Elvis and brought in Jim. Jim, pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. So Jim is the local New England rep for Vacol. I just want to sit here and say Vacol all day. <laughs> it looks like Wacol, which I made the mistake and you um, immediately corrected me. But uh, yeah, Vacol. So Vacol has a line of adhesives, um, moisture barriers, mm -hmm. or moisture retarder barrier type systems. Now, when we went to Moffy and said, what should we be using for an adhesive? They immediately said, Vacol's your solution. So we got in touch with you guys. You guys provided us with the necessary solutions, but we're here to talk a little bit today about exactly what those are. So I'm going to turn it over to you. I know Vockel's a German company, mm -hmm. right? Headquartered in Germany. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the company and then tell us a little bit about what we're using and why. Okay, Vockel is based in Germany and uh, all the adhesives are manufactured over there and uh, shipped over to us in Wadesboro, North Carolina. And then we sell all throughout the country, uh, yeah, all throughout the industry yeah, from there. So it's uh, MS-260. It's, it's an adhesive that contains, it's silane based, modified silane is, okay. the, is the base. And it has no isocyanates in it. It's okay. VOC free. So uh, it will... If it gets on the surface of the pre-finished flooring, because it has no isocyanates, it won't etch the finish. Okay. So you can just even if it even if finish is dried, 
uh, or adhesive is dried on the surface of the finish, it can just be cleaned off, won't leave any permanent marks on the finish. Gotcha. So that's very helpful. And, uh, and, and of course, VOC free. Yes. VOC free. This is our moisture retardant when it's used on plywood, single layer. Okay. So it's a roll on moisture barium, and this jug covers about a thousand square feet. Okay. So you roll it all out, and it dramatically slows the transmission of moisture from the subfloor into the back of the flooring. I got you. And you can also put this on concrete too, on right? Conc yep, so on it's concrete con plywood. Yep. It's, it's basically, if we did one coat, as I understand it, it's a vapor retarder system. Correct. Right? It slows the moisture migration mm -hmm. through the system. If I put two coats on, it changes that dynamic. To a moisture blocking. To a moisture barrier. Yeah. So you always system. use that with concrete. Yeah, so it's a coat. question of, do I just want to slow the moisture or do I want to stop the moisture? Exactly. That basically predicts whether I do one or two coats. Yep, that's correct. So we're not using this system here. Right, um, not on the we, on the. We have board. our radiant floor. So we were just looking for the adhesive, but it's nice to know. It's like, you know, these types of systems as an architect, these are the kind of systems that are very elusive, mm -hmm. right? And everybody says, oh, you should do this, you should do that. And if I ask 10 people, I get 10 different answers. Mm -hmm. so I should I should glue the floor down. I shouldn't glue the floor down. I should use a vapor barrier or a moisture barrier. I should do something that's vapor open. So it's really good to have you guys come out, have that discussion, the knowledge, team up with people like Elvis that have been doing it for years and come up with a really good solution. So I'm going to push this one just back a little bit because I want to talk about the one we're actually using mm -hmm. here. Um, so this is a trowel on, right? It's a bunch of goop. Yep, bunch of goop. Yep, a bunch of goop. <laughs> Three and gallons of goop. We it on. Mm -hmm. um, in this system in particular, um, <clears throat> we have obviously the radiant tubes on the aluminum face, so he can kind of do a serpentine type wipe in between the tubes. Yep, he could. But you were saying that this is, if it touches the tubes, we're not in any harm's way. Right, not in harm's way. Again, no, no isocyanates, so the isocyanates won't affect the plastic tubes. There are none in it. So gotcha. perfectly safe to use on top of it. And so he'll spread that around, mm -hmm. get a, a generous coat, put the hardwood floor down on top of it again, pre-finished hardwood floor, and we should be good to go. Mm -hmm. Anything else Vockel makes that we should know about? Vockel makes a, a host of adhesives for everything from resilient to uh, LVT, uh, you name it. There are, we make leveling agents, uh, everything having to do with the preparation of any kind of subfloor okay. uh, to put down any kind of floor surface. Do website? Yep, uh, lobavockel.com, L-O-B-A-V-A-K-O-L.com. Well, there you have it. Yeah. All right. Well, and of course, anyone can always get in touch with me through the website. I'm the New England rep. and uh, I'm assuming you're the New England rep, but I'm assuming we have reps the reps in the country. Yep. F f uh, 14 reps around the country. 14 so. reps around yeah. the country taking care of your needs. If you're looking for that flooring adhesive or moisture barrier, Bacle could be your answer. So go check them out. LovaBacle.com. You get it. All right. Well, thanks for making the trip. Sure. Jim. Thank you very I much. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for your insight. And most of all, thank you for being part of our project and being part of our solution. Thank you very much. I appreciate Pleasure's it. Pleasure's mine. All right. So we talked with Elvis. We talked with Jim. We talked everything, hardwood flooring, prepping for the install. Now we moved over to bathroom two. Yes, I'm live from bathroom two. I got Rodrigo who owns Peterson Tile and we're putting down the underlayment. Now, this is Butech from Porcelanosa. Yes, go ahead. Right, and this gets adhered down to the radiant floor system. Um, so tell us a little bit, Rodrigo, why, why do we care about putting down an underlayment underneath the tile? Yeah, this is from uh, Porcelanosa. This is the high quality product for preparation. This, we use the best in situ for the same brand recommended and now my guys screen the floor first with the trowel and in the back the membrane to have the 100% better glue. Yes, so I saw that, that they back buttered the, the uh, laminate there and when they push it down we get that 100% glue but yeah. what's the reason that I would want to put this down? Now I see a lot of guys they come in they put in tile they'll put in you know quarter inch cement board mm -hmm. and then they screw that down 
and then they yeah. put the more the mortar right on top of that and put the tile down. Yeah. But we're not doing that. Yeah, the cement the cement board is a little bit old school. Okay. This today is the more modern. This fabricate protects the tile with the movement, the subfloor in the winter and summer. This keeps safe the pot, the tile, everything the protection. Gotcha. So basically we uncouple the mortar bed from the flooring system. So yep. both of them can move independently, right? Sure. This is, I guess what I would call it in, from the old school days, a slip sheet, right? Mm -hmm. Things can slide yep. along that slip sheet. And so Porcelanosa has their whole system. So they sell tile and we're gonna be using their tile, but they have their whole installation system, which, you know, if you've been following along on this whole series, you can see a lot of companies have come to this kind of systems approach, which is, I think, a, a really good approach for the industry in that, you know, the, these companies are selling their product or their finished product, but they're also selling the means by which you should properly install it. Um, and it makes your life easier, right? Yes. Because it's one company. It's not like you can say, hey, we bought this tile from this company and then company B, um, did the underlayment and they say, well, it's their fault. They say it's their fault. Now they pretty much own the whole system, yeah. which makes it. They post another, we have everything. Then they begin the job and then they should finish everything. The okay. preparation, tile, everything. Okay, so this is all prepped. Does this have to sit in, um, sit here for a little bit of a time to mm -hmm. glue down? Yep. Like when would we, um, give me a timetable. When would we be coming in here and putting down floor tile? If I like, we can start the installation too later. No problem. You could start yes. even later today, yep. right? So you just give this a couple we, hours. Yes, couple hours, and, and then we'll be, be ready. good to go. Yep. Okay. And then we'll we'll be putting the tile. The tile goes down in a standard system. So we have a mortar bed, put the tile on top of yep. it, and then we basically will grout that. Yes. So. Sure. All right. Well, there you have it, Rodrigo, giving us the uh, underlayment on the tile install. So. We'll be sure to uh, come back. We'll catch up with you a little later when we're actually putting the tiles in and uh, look forward to seeing some beautiful tile going down. Sure, and we have the nice system for the master bed too. It's very good. Okay, so we'll catch up with you here in a few days. And uh, But until then, thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Well, there you have it, Bill Joe. So we talked everything flooring today. We threw in a little bonus on the pool. We threw a little bonus in on the uh, Coltec stormwater management. We got to see a bunch of the siding going up there on the outside. Whole lots of things going on here. Stay tuned. Next episode, we're gonna have a whole bunch more places uh, really hopping here. We got doors getting installed, trim, everything that we talked about, almost all of the subcontractors are out here. So, Steve Basic Architect from Build Show, Build Boston. Until next time.